When writing anything, it's important to picture it in your mind's eye, which means that screenwriters usually have an idea of the actor they'd like to ideally play major characters. But these men and women don't get to make the final call. This list will focus on surprising character roles that were either written for specific stars or at the very least had them in mind, approaching them early before being taken on by the actor who we eventually saw on screen. I'm Cypher for What Culture, and these are 10 more movie roles obviously designed for other actors. Number 10, Will Smith as Django, Django Unchained. With a back catalogue like The Fresh Princes, as well as the generational appeal, it's not all that shocking that directors big and small want to work with him. Quentin Tarantino has collaborated with a lot of the biggest names in cinema over the last several decades, but he's yet to pen anything for Will Smith, unless you count the fact that Smith was offered the role of Django in 2012 western thriller Django Unchained. Rumours stated that Smith was uncomfortable with starring in such a violent movie and a story that centred on slavery. However, the Academy Award winner said that he simply passed on it because he wanted to play the lead and he didn't think Django was the true protagonist. Sure enough, in the film's conclusion, King Schultz, as played by Christopher Waltz, kills the picture's villain rather than Django himself, and Smith, in his words, wanted to kill the bad guy. Coincidentally, Waltz did win Best Supporting Actor for the role, whereas the final casting of Django, Jamie Foxx, whilst praised, walked out of the process without any new awards. Number 9. The Rock as Everyone. The One. If you thought that the weird 2000s CGI Dwayne Johnson from his early forays into the Mummy franchise was bad, he picked that series over a film that was so critically derided it might have stopped his movie career before it started. 2001's The One is a sci-fi action film that is special effects heavy and also completely absurd. Dealing with multiple universes, Jet Li plays 10 different variations of the same character and is not only the protagonist but also the antagonist. However, the film wasn't originally designed for him, not by a long shot. The script was originally titled The Rock Movie, which really says it all, and yes, it was fully intended that Dwayne The Rock Johnson would go from the WWE into a movie where he plays nearly a dozen variations of himself. Reportedly, early CGI of the fight between Good Guy Rock and Bad Guy Rock was even worked on before he passed on the project and moved on to The Mummy Returns. Unfortunately, in doing so, we missed out on Johnson and Jason Statham appearing on screen together in the early 2000s, years before they were united in Hobbs and Shaw. Eventually, the film was retitled The One, and Jet Li did his best to save a movie that was doomed to a critical lambasting. Number 8. Rachel Lee Cook as Rogue, X-Men before the MCU, there was Sony and 20th Century Fox's respective Spider-Man and X-Men trilogies. The first instalment in the latter, released in 2000, is fondly remembered for how it adapted the source material for the big screen. Whilst Hugh Jackman's Wolverine was the convincing breakout star of the show, a character just as central to the story was Rogue, and her internal battle with her abilities, expertly portrayed by Anna Paquin. 21 years after its release, Rachel Lee Cook, who acted alongside Paquin in She's All That, revealed that she had originally been approached about and offered the role of Rogue, but had passed on it. Describing the experience, Cook recounted that she had been told by acquaintances within the industry that it was important for her to be seen as a serious actor, which led to her rejecting the offer from Fox to star in the upcoming superhero film. Whilst they're all the rage now, it's worth noting that superhero movies have largely been a big risk, usually seen as kitsch and not the kind of thing that actors pursuing deep character performances and awards should involve themselves with. Cook also said that the first time she saw the film's posters and intense marketing, she realised her mistake and has regretted it ever since. Number 7. Michael J. Fox and Elvira as Mark Kendall and the Countess, Once Bitten Once Bitten is a 1985 horror comedy that bombed on release but has since grown a small cult following. The film follows a teen all too keen for his first sexual experiences that he winds up wrapped around the finger of a 400-year-old vampiric countess. The movie has a couple of interesting casting details, with the leading man of Mark Kendall originally written with Michael J. Fox in mind. However, as the story goes, the producers weren't convinced that Fox was a big enough star. Ironically, and not being approached for once bitten, Fox would miss out on this turkey and instead appear in both Teen Wolf and Back to the Future in the same year and become a household name. As such, the film moved ahead with up-and-coming stand-up comedian Jim Carrey in his first leading role in a feature-length picture. Carrey is certainly a highlight here that sets the stage for the actor he would become, but it's character seems incredibly muted compared to the wackiness of his 90s performances in The Mask and Ace Ventura. Additionally, his vampiric love interest, played by Lauren Hutton, was originally intended for Cassandra Peterson, also known as the legendary Ilvera, and it's interesting to consider if her star power would have made a difference to the film's eventual bargain bin fate. Number 6. Marilyn Monroe as Holly Golightly, Breakfast at Tiffany's 
This is a case not so much of a screenwriter envisioning an actress, but before that the author of the original novel. When putting together the 1958 Breakfast at Tiffany's novella, Truman Capote pictured the character of Holly Golightly portrayed in his mind by Marilyn Monroe. And why not? She was the most prominent woman in cinema during that period after all. So when the movie was adapted for the big screen years later, Capote pushed for his vision to become a reality. To that point, screenwriter George Axelrod was asked to write his script in a way that appealed to the actress's strengths. However, Lee Strauss who had trained Monroe out of his acting school in New York City, advised her to pass on the role as her portraying a lady of the evening could harm her image. The studio's choice for Holly was Audrey Hepburn, who at first also passed on the role before changing her mind. Coincidentally, Breakfast at Tiffany's would go on to be one of Hepburn's most iconic and beloved performances, and the image of her with her hair up and holding a large cigarette holder is one of the 21st century's most recognisable cinematic looks. Number 5. Richard Pryor as Sheriff Bart – Blazing Saddles Mel Brooks' 1974 comedy western Blazing Saddles absolutely knocked socks off on release for being raucous, racy and a non-stop ride of comedic twists. As for the film's starring role, Sheriff Bart had been written with a particular name in mind, one that appears in the film's credits. Legendary stand-up comedian Richard Pryor was involved in the earlier drafts of the film and is credited as such, but he was also first choice to play Blazing Saddles' lead character. However, Warner Brothers refused to insure Pryor because of his history of drug use and arrests associated with it. The film's racially charged humour was so perfect for Pryor and the kind of routines he was known for that director Mel Brooks almost abandoned the project altogether before Pryor himself recommended Cleveland Little. Whilst the movie's smash hit triumph against all odds speaks volumes about Little's success in the role, it's hard not to imagine how great Pryor would have been performing as a character that was clearly his to play. Number 4. Zoe Deschanel as the Wasp, The Avengers This is a rare case of a character written for a certain actor that didn't necessarily pan out because the character was actually shelved, but because of the nature of adaptation and the constantly evolving state of Marvel, the role did eventually show up in the hands of another actor. According to 2021's The Story of Marvel Studios, the making of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Josh Whedon's early scripts for the first Avengers film were a tad different. Concerns about Scarlett Johansson's ability to commit to the project led Whedon to write a new film female lead. Whedon, in his words, fell in love with writing The Wasp, who became the focal point of the story and got all of the funniest lines. Producer Jeremy Latcham had to pull Whedon away from the idea so that Avengers could focus more on the ensemble that had been set up by previous outings, but revealed that Whedon's writing had Zoe Deschanel in mind. At the time, Deschanel had had favourable performances as quirky and comedic characters in Yes Man, Elf and The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. The character of the Wasp made her way into the MCU six years later in Ant-Man and the Wasp. With a new writing and directing team, Whedon's vision of Deschanel as the character never came to be, with Evangeline Lilly taking upon the mantle instead. Number 3. George Clooney as Jack Frost Jack Frost for every great Christmas movie, there are at least a dozen hollow, unashamed cash grabs. One of these is Warner Brothers' 1998 Christmas flop, Jack Frost, that centres around a father, written for George Clooney, who becomes reincarnated as his kid Snowman. When Clooney left the project, things got mighty awkward. For one, the Snowman animatronics, handled by the experts over at Jim Henson's Creature Shop, had modelled the character's facial features and acting style on the A-lister, so it would have been hard to shake the idea that whoever stepped into the role was playing second fiddle. Many names were considered or Approached, but it was Michael Keaton who eventually took the chance. Ironically, Clooney left Jack Frost to work on Batman and Robin, a series that Keaton had been instrumental in kicking off back in 1989. Unfortunately, the departure of George Clooney also prompted the film's director, Sam Raimi, to jump ship too. His replacement was Troy Miller, who, whilst having experience in television and stand-up, had never directed a feature before. The film was an abject failure, failing to make back its budget or impress audiences in any way. Clooney seems to have narrowly avoided disaster, as whether you think it looks like him or not, the Snowman character was heavily criticised for just being weird and creepy. At least Batman and Robin, as stupid as it is, is fun. Number 2. John Candy, John Belushi and Eddie Murphy – Ghostbusters the sci-fi comedy adventure of failed professors going into business for themselves, Ghostbusters is a film that personifies the 1980s. It also has perhaps one of the most perfect casts of all time, gifting iconic roles to all of its major players. Several characters in early drafts had certain actors in mind that never made it to screen. In the storyboards leading to the film's production, sketches of Lewis Tully are very clearly not Rick Moranis, and are instead writing duo Aykroyd and Ramis' first choice of John Candy. However, Candy's request to tweak the character ultimately led to his replacement. The original drafts for the movie were intensely different and were set in the far future, with Ghostbusters being part of a massive time-travelling conglomerate. 
In Aykroyd's earliest visions, the film was a comedy adventure vehicle for himself and long-standing acting partner John Belushi. When Belushi passed away, the role of Dr. Venkman instead went to fellow Second City alumni Bill Murray. Similarly, Eddie Murphy admitted that Aykroyd offered him the role of Winston Zeddemore. However, when the film got closer to fruition, Murphy turned the part down for Beverly Hills Cop. This left Ernie Hudson to pick up the role who, compared to Murphy, was a relative unknown. Hudson was a great fit for Zeddemore, who offered an understated straight man role to the supernatural chaos around him, and in doing so, launched his own film career proper. Number 1. Sylvester Stallone as Axel Foley, Beverly Hills Cop what made Beverly Hills Cop so good when it arrived is how it flew against typical action film fare, swapping out the macho bravado super cop for something more chaotic and comedic. Axel Foley, a reckless danger to the force, finds himself way out of his depth when he leaves Detroit to pursue a personal case in Beverly Hills. Whilst several actors were considered for the role, the closest who got to the starting line was mainstay action megastar Sylvester Stallone. In fact, he actually got cast. Stallone was, in a way, a perfect fit. The role of Foley would have given him an opportunity to almost play a parody of his other hyper-masculine work, and his name value alone would have sold the film. Instead, he took the script and rewrote it, turning Beverly Hills Cop into a straightforward action flick. Stallone presented this version to the studio two weeks before production was set to begin, but was simply told no. Days later, he would be replaced by Eddie Murphy. This means there's possibly a script for Beverly Hills Cop out there in theory that stars an Axel Foley designed specifically for Stallone's style of big muscles, big guns, and big explosions, written by the actor himself, assuming Paramount didn't immediately shred it. Thankfully, the project got back on track, and Eddie played the role like it had been his all along and became a film star overnight because of it. And that's the list. Let us know what you thought of this video down in the comments below. Which of these did you know about already? And of course, let us know any more of these that we might have missed. It's always interesting to know about casting details and imagine how different a film could be because of them. Make sure you like this video, share it with your friends, subscribe and hit that notification bell. I've been Cy for What Culture, and have a good week.